welcome back. This week we're going to talk about the huge range of available handle materials. From woods to synthetics to carbon fibres to polymers and resins of all different types, right through to antlers and bones, woolly mammoth ivory and even meteorites. Basically, if it exists, we can bolt a knife to it. It's a very detailed and expansive subject, so let's get started and we're going to first talk about woods. We use stabilised woods in the main. The reason being is stabilised materials do not shift, they do not take in moisture, they do not take in blood. Stabilisation is a specialist process whereby a piece of wood is submerged in a resin of some description, there's multiple different types, um, and then the resin is sucked in under a vacuum that is then transferred to a pressure chamber and more resin is forced in. These then resins either air cure or thermally cure in an oven. This creates what's called a closed cell stabilization, which is the only food safe version. You can also add colors. So we can take a natural sort of blonde colored piece of material and add, add a blue dye to it. This one, for example, is a piece of stabilized poplar burl. This is its natural color and it's just had a clear resin impregnated into it. This one, however, is also a piece of poplar bell in, done in the same process, likely from the same tree, however, has had a blue dye introduced into the stabilization. The same principle applies to this piece of bird's eye maple, which has had a black and yellow dye introduced, creating these sort of yellow circles. This will be apparent further into the material as well once it's cut in half. Colour and variation and hue and grain is massively variable and you can basically choose whatever you want. One of the classic materials that we use is desert ironwood. It comes in various grades. We tend to go for the high grade, grade 15, which is the exhibition grade material. Very high figure, has nice black spalting or medallial rays in it. This one is platan. It has a naturally occurring blue or black vein running through the material. It's very, very tough but makes for awesome handles um, due to its sort of variations in hue and colour and grain size. Moving on into hybrid materials. Hybrid materials are a wood and resin combination. You have a wany piece of material, then it's put into a block mould, and then we pour a resin in on top and it bonds the two pieces together, creating this really nice sort of contrast between the two different types of material. They come in loads of different colours and you can add pearlescent or, or, or micas to them and you can also have them glow in the dark. Sticking with the hybrids then, this would be a different type of hybrid which is a full resin pour which has just got an aluminium honeycomb built into it. These again, hundred different colours, different colour combinations, as you can see the red, blue and yellow in this one. And these make for really different um, looking handle materials. We often specialise these for our Halloween editions because they are always one-off. Further down the spectrum of the hybrids then, more natural hybrids still, are stabilised spruce cones. These are an entire spruce cone put into a mould and a resin poured in on top of it. What we would do with this material is to cut it down the middle, and then open it up and you would see the pith line of the actual spruce cone running down the middle and we'd make that a feature of the knife. Synthetics then. First up, kirinite. Kirinite is a type of acrylic, very hard wearing, very durable, it braids beautifully and polishes to like a mirror polish, which is really, really good for knife handles, obviously. Um, they come in hundreds of colors. They are very elegant and very dazzling. They pick up the light really nicely because they have a steel mica in them or a pearlescent mica. Next up is Raffia. Raffia is actually a brand name for a company that manufacture these blocks. Uh, they are well known for this aluminium mica in different, different forms, either little strips or little combs. Uh, this particular one is the swirl, which is like little half moon pieces of aluminium. Uh, they come in lots of different colours and is one of the more hard wearing of the synthetics. It's basically a very, very tough polymer. Uh, they are also well known for the special effects range. Like this one I have in my hand is the uh, special effects raffia swirl. This will glow blue in direct sunlight and then glows green at night once it's charged with UV. Next up, Inlace. Well known for its shiny luster once polished. It's very hard to work with because it's very difficult to polish, but once achieved, looks amazing. It's also known for its bizarre names. This particular one is called Molten Bees, and we have another one called Demon's Blood. This particular knife is made 
in patina passion in lace, which is the green and copper. It looks beautiful with a pearlescent quality in the copper and purple elements. The next type of synthetic we have then are known as phenolic fiber resins. They are G10, which is a basically lattice of fiberglass. They're very, very hard wearing. They're not shiny. They come in these matte block colors, but they can be really good for like grip and texture. There's also Makata, which comes in three different types, which is paper, linen, and jute. They are again, very, very tough materials. The Makata and G10 are the most stable materials you can put on a knife. They have the best uh, working range in terms of heat and cold. Uh, so they won't, they, and they will never move and never shift about. Black linen Makata is actually what we use on the Raymere's bushcraft knives. It is obviously laminated layers of linen with an epoxy resin, making it very, very hard, very durable. Um, but gives this nice sort of natural vibe when um, abraded in the right way. Next up, we have carbon fiber. Obviously very tough, very durable, very lightweight. The new modern carbon fibers, you can have infills in them. This particular one has a copper lattice running through it, which changes the effect and the hue of the whole material. Sticking with carbon fiber then, we have things like the new fat carbons, which are multiple different colors all laminated together. Again, changing the effect of the knife. Very, very cool when paired with Turbo Glow. This type of fat carbon is called Unicopper Raindrop, and it is a copper matrix running through the fiber. This one is made in a slightly different way, which is the Space Coral. So it's a much, much tighter weave, um, but creates this amazing pattern. Turbo Glow is a newish material that is a block color that then also glows in the dark. Works fantastic for liners, but in recent months can also be used for the outside of the knives. Bones and antler are very popular on knives. However, most are not food safe. They can be stabilized to some degree, but never to the closed cell standard, which will reduce their lifespan. And obviously you get blood and moisture in there. They will start to like delaminate. Most species of European deer, the antlers are not big enough or have too much marrow in them to actually bolt to a knife. And this piece of moose, for example, is pretty much solid all the way through. Another type of antler that's used a lot is reindeer usually because they're for through tang knives like sami knives or scandinavian knives if you like that have a cap on each end to stop any ingress directly into the marrow there are also a lot of bones used in knife making mainly camel giraffe zebra they can be stabilized to some degree but often not 100 percent usually if a knife isn't food safe or cannot be stabilized or someone has supplied the material to us we would not offer a lifetime warranty on that product next up we have fossilized products mainly in the mammoth stuff, but we have done stuff in dinosaur bones before now. I just don't have any to show you because we obviously buy them in specially. The mammoth ivory, there are three major products. You have the molar. This stuff is harder than the blade steel in a lot of cases, and it will eat tools all day long. It's very, very dense, very, very hard wearing. Makes for amazing, albeit slightly heavy knives. Next up is the mammoth ivory. It comes in lots of different grades and hues and colors and ages. It has its own bizarre price structure, but the most sought after in the main are the bookmarked core pieces. Um, when I say core, I mean it's from right from the middle of the ivory um, rather than the bark, which is cut on the opposite plane. Other rare and interesting materials include things like this, which is a 100,000 year old fossilized tiger coral. It's quite rare in large sections like this. It's very, very hard to work with, um, but makes for amazing yet expensive knives. Next up then, meteorites. They are very rare, very expensive, especially when you're trying to make a whole knife handle out of them. The last two that we have bought for a certain project, which is still ongoing after two years, were bought from a museum. This particular one is a piece of palisite. It is one of the rarer forms of meteorite and has a gemstone in it called peridot. The silver section you're seeing is a nickel and iron lattice, which was originally molten and has trapped the peridot inside Often paired with meteorites, due to the higher nature of the product, you tend to see more gold pins, gold liners, or silver liners. These are all viable handle materials, all precious metals are. You can even start going down the road of precious gemstones, setting in diamonds. There's a whole different range of knives out there that have this. These are the more art knife style things. Not really what we are known for, but we can do it. So 
this is where we store our materials. Uh, this is an upstairs area. This is the bulk of what we stock. Obviously, there are a lot, so we can't stock everything. Uh, rarely do we have to bring a customer up here, but we would do um, if they're really struggling to decide what they would like. I hope you found that informative. Thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.